I want to talk just a little bit about uh, what's been going on this week. Uh, George Santos was just uh, voted out, uh, was just expelled first time since uh, Jim Trafficant, uh, who was what, from Louisiana, if I remember correctly. Uh, was Ohio, Ohio? Ohio. Ohio. Yeah, yeah, Ohio, Ohio. With, with the checkered pants. And yeah. The, yeah and, beat me uh, up, Scotty. And uh, it's an interesting dynamic because I would imagine the Democrats would have, like if they really could have had their way, would have loved to have, you know, uh, Santos around <laughs> next year to Who be wouldn't? sort of all right i mean honestly like it, if you're trying to build a narrative about like corrupt uh party and a party that doesn't care that would be the way uh the republicans seem to have their cake and eat it too in this instance because enough of them were able to vote against uh voting uh, santos out but all the the new york republicans were able to vote uh were to vote him out mm-hmm. what what's your sense of any of this is there anything any any relevance to this now that there's two thir- four thirty five members is the full time first time they've had a full complement, I think, of Congress people and I don't know a year Forever. or something. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so it's not on a numbers game. It's not really that relevant, right? Right. I think they they waited until it wouldn't be relevant. You know, he Santos told McCarthy right out of the gate, like, just tell me what I need to do, and McCarthy's like, cool. Then I will. We will seat you because there was there was pressure on them not to seat him. Yep. When it emerged that everything was a lie. Well, the New York, um, like Suffolk County Republicans disowned yeah. him. I think before he was seated, even. Right. Yeah. And so the the deal with McCarthy basically was you know he had this extremely slim majority, and they needed his votes. Yep. On, on uh, measures that they were trying to get through as well, not just for McCarthy to be speaker. So I guess they're at the point now where they're like, you know what, we can, it's, it's more important for us to be able to reelect some of these Republicans in New York state by being able to distance ourselves from him than, than we need his vote. Cause we've got, you know, a couple other people in. And so they're, they're feeling comfortable with their margins and a lot that's going to be done between now and then will probably be, you know, government shutdown stuff. You always have votes from both sides. So yeah, I think they just figured we can, we can say goodbye to George. Um, the, speaking of the government shutdown, like, what is your sense of, uh, what's going on with Johnson? Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm starting to read more of like conservatives complaining about him, but they're giving him a long honeymoon. Cause I think on some level they know like he's one of us. It's just that, is he, is he, is he tough enough to yeah. do whatever it is that they, I can't tell what they exactly they right. want him to do, but, uh, whatever it is. Right. They're going to keep he's going to keep annoying them. Uh, anybody in that position would, um, he's there's, you know, there's rumors that, uh, he, that he's going to kind of attach some type of, uh, you know, surveillance reauthorization, 702 reauthorization to the, the NDAA, which a big priority of this, a freedom caucus joined you know, one of the few things they joined with the progressive caucus on is reforming, you know, 702 surveillance authorities, and there's rumors that he might that, that he and the Senate might just try to slip it through using the NDAA. That's going to piss people off. Uh, keeping the government open you know, <laughs> pisses them off. Um, and you know he 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 doesn't have any experience doing any of this. Uh, so and he, he just you know threw in the towel last time, punted to this kind of latter January situation. And you know it it's hard to see how he. Like you said, what do they want? And what is the path by which he could give it to them? That's like the neither thing. of those neither of those questions have an answer. Right. Uh, I mean, have like the people who got rid of McCarthy, have they gotten anything materially f- from it? <laughs> Not yet, other than McCarthy being gone, I guess. I mean, that's I mean, yeah. I just I'm just curious. Right. I can't I mean, I can't think of anything. It, it it is biz- i mean maybe they just did it and they realized that it you know like the the uh, redoing this process over and over again like they cried uncle cuz it was getting so chaotic but um i s- am fascinated by those rumors that uh you know Nancy Mace has some dirt on Kevin McCarthy or something like that like it just felt so personal from Gates and from Nancy Mace to defect mm-hmm. in that way or yeah dirt or like just yeah personal stuff going on plus gates's whole ethics situation yeah yeah there's just giant mess and you know the way they were they the way they reasoned it was 
they think the country's headed in the wrong direction. So it's just, we, and they would say, we don't know if this is going to work out for us or not, but we know that the direction it's going is bad. So let's grab the wheel, fling it into the ditch and just, you know, see what emerges from the wreckage. That was kind of the, that was their public rationale for why they were going to do this, which it, that's a logic. Like that's a, okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, that's a thing, but they I, don't I have just, the white house or the Senate, which is a, just a, a very troublesome detail uh, for trying to like govern, trying to enact your agenda. Um, uh, you know, getting back to your book, I've also just remi- reminded of like uh, the fight with where the, uh, the squad essentially um, maybe the squad plus um, kept expanded um, empl- unemployment mm-hmm. compensation in the uh, American rescue act. Manchin was trying to kill that from the Senate and reach into the caucus. But the, I think it was permitted Jayapal was able to say like, they're not going to vote for it. And right. so I can't deliver you the votes because they're not going to vote for it. If you get rid of that. I and mean, this was over the $15 minimum wage stuff. Yeah. So, that was a, know, that was a tell real... that story. Cause this is like an important dynamic that I think there's no analog to this in the Republican party, because there's no ask, there's no set of things right. that they want. <laughs> They, I mean, it's, and so, I mean, this is the problem I think people make all the time is like, we want our own freedom caucus. Well, the dynamic is such that it doesn't function in the same way because the freedom caucus doesn't care about actually building something like any dream progressive left wing entity in the, in the democratic party. We want them to actually do stuff, not inhibit the doing of stuff. Yeah, and this this really got no attention at the time, but it was fascinating. And there were because there's three things going on. There's the fifteen dollar minimum wage that uh, the left wanted in this package. Uh, there's the uh, two thousand dollar checks that the left wanted in the, in the package, and there's the ex- massively expanded unemployment benefits. And so AOC actually did something extremely clever with the with the, with these checks. So six hundred dollars had already gone out had been put out by uh, Trump uh, tr- and then Trump's like, actually it should be 2000. So AOC had introduced a bill immediately saying, all right, here's the 1400 pass it now. Uh, Mitch McConnell's like, no, we're not going to pass this. And then that became the big issue in the Georgia Senate runoffs. Like, do you want these $1,400 checks passed or not? If you do vote for Democrats, if you don't vote for Republicans, people shockingly were like, yes, we want them voted for Democrats. But what AOC had done in the bill which people hadn't really noticed at the time was she had also moved the amount that every dependent got up from, it was like 400 or so. Well, they to, if I remember correctly, it was yeah. like they were talking 2000 for everybody, mm-hmm. but it was a narrower set of people. And so when and, the 1400 came out, less. it was a wider yep. uh, group of people. And also dependents would also get the full 1400, which, which meant that if you're a family of four, aside from the checks you already got, from the last bill in December, you were getting a check for $5,600. Like, like when that lands in your account, that's a, that's a big, that's a big check. And nobody noticed that. I mean, babies like people noticed, but like it, it didn't get any attention that all of a sudden it was, everybody was getting this amount. So they wanted that. They wanted this, what they called the super doll, you know, $600, $600 extra month, um, uh, unemployment benefits for everybody. And so mansion comes back, and he's trying to narrow the, so, you know, the $15 minimum wage gets booted out. Bernie forces a vote on it. They don't have the vote, so it, it doesn't get in. But then Manchin comes back. He tries to narrow who can get these checks. And he tries to um, uh, strip, strip down unemployment benefits. And there's so much anger about the minimum wage. And there's so much kind of public discussion and energy around this that Jayapal is able to very credibly tell Schumer, look, like you said, the, I don't have the votes for this. If you pull this out, the, the squad is going to walk on this. Like they, they, you've already had this stupid parliamentarian thing with the minimum wage. Now you're going to try to trim back on these checks and unemployment benefits. And so Schumer was then, and and people could feel the energy, like in 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 Congress, you could you can sense whether or not a threat has power behind it or not, and you could just sense that. No, they're 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 feeling real pressure from their base. So when. Schumer then goes to Manchin. He's like, look, I can't do this for you. Like, I'm going to lose that. So then it's up to Manchin 
do I take this whole thing down or do I cave? And it was, it was a rare moment because it's, it's, it's so hard for the left to credibly make those threats because usually the left is like, all right, and this is dollars is better clear. than six hundred dollars. This is essentially February or March of twenty twenty right. of twenty twenty one. Right. And um, and this is also, frankly, I mean, you know, I, I felt this at the time. Mansion's weakness then was at its he was at peak weakness. Mm-hmm. Like we started to hear, I think you guys were the ones who got that audio of him yeah. talking to no labels, and that didn't happen until like a month or two after that. Yeah. And yeah. that would have been the time for Biden to come back with build back better. Cause Manchin yeah. was like, he didn't know what was going on. He was yes. saying, maybe we need $6 trillion of spending yes. instead of 4 trillion. And he hadn't heard essentially yet from, he was, he seemed to be walking around looking for like, who's going to adopt me here. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. uh, and, and if Biden had struck quicker, Instead of like wasting all that time with the re- inviting the Republicans to over and then inviting uh, Portman and Cinema in to uh, provide their mm-hmm. sort of like whole set of bills, it seems like that's when you do it. When you, you know the heat right. is on, the the metal is soft. That's when you start to pound and you and, and you do that. And then they waited until like the Cinema and Mansion could find each other and find their funders and et cetera. And, you, and et cetera. then you start to see inflation numbers tick up. And then, he, and then he's like, "Okay, there's my thing." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can right. but yes, that's that what was it is. his hook. Yeah. yeah, but then, but then, Mansion facing that choice early on caved. It's like, all right, if, if the squad's going to walk, that early, walk. he had no, he had yeah. no uh, grip on it. 